you just wrapped up an incident involving an electric vehicle and the battery's damaged or you suspect there's damage to the battery. Or maybe you're a tow operator responding after a crash and you have to pick up an electric vehicle. What are some things you need to consider? Now in my video about electric vehicle fires, I recommend that if you have a fire, a vehicle fire inside of a garage or next to an exposure, to get a tow truck there, get a winch there, hook onto that vehicle, pull that vehicle out of the structure away from the exposure. I had a really concerning comment from a tow operator where he was actually instructed to go up to that flaming vehicle, that garage fire, and hook the cable up to that vehicle with no PPE whatsoever. Now, if you're a tow operator, if you're command on one of these incidents, absolutely do not do that. We have firefighters with full PP, SCBA. They're more than capable of taking a cable, walking up to that vehicle and hooking it around a tire, a control arm or something to get that vehicle away from there. There's no reason we should be sending a tow operator unprotected into an IDLH atmosphere. Now, after an incident and you've got to remove an electric vehicle, realize that electric vehicles need flatbed tow trucks to move them. This is very important because if you tow an electric vehicle and the drive wheels are on the ground, those drive wheels will rotate. They can still create electricity. They can still create heat. They can cause a fire. And the last thing you want in an electric vehicle is to cause a fire. Now, could the vehicle be towed safely on dollies? The answer is yes, but experts in the industry really prefer using a flatbed tow truck. Now, when you're loading an electric vehicle onto a flatbed or winching it across a long distance, realize every electric vehicle handles this situation a little bit differently. Teslas, for example, they have a transport mode that you have to switch on inside their system. This disengages the motors for a low speed, short distance transport. Now, when you start moving that vehicle, start winching it onto the flatbed, winching it across that short distance area, if that battery's been damaged mechanically, it's been damaged thermally, you've got an unstable situation on your hands. There's wiring inside the battery box, bus bars. If those bus bars, that wiring becomes damaged, it shorts things out, it could cause a fire. If you have thermally damaged battery cells, they could fail at any moment, very unexpectedly. So that could cause problems for you as you start moving this vehicle. You get the vehicle onto your tow truck, you start driving down the road. The vibration from moving the vehicle, driving down the road could cause a fire after the fact. So there is always a risk when you're moving a damaged electric vehicle of fire. Command should really consider having the fire apparatus follow the tow truck to the salvage yard. That way, if there is an incident somewhere between the actual main fire incident and unloading that vehicle, that the apparatus is there and they can take care of it. And that way you don't lose a tow truck. Now, once that vehicle gets to the tow yard, to the salvage yard, it needs to be stored at least 50 feet from any exposures, any other vehicles, any buildings. It can't be stored inside. This is because delayed fire is a real possibility when it comes to electric vehicles. You could have a fire a day later, a week later, a month later. There was just an incident of a vehicle that was damaged in the floodwaters of Hurricane Ian about a year ago that just recently caught fire. So a year after the damage, these electric vehicles still have the possibility of catching on fire. If you're finding my content useful, click the like button, subscribe to my channel. It really helps things out as I grow this channel. Now, depending on the severity of the crash, maybe there's a fatality involved, maybe it's a severe injury. The police take that vehicle, they wanna keep it as evidence. It's now a crime scene. A lot of police departments, they'll store those vehicles inside as evidence. That's absolutely something that cannot happen with these electric vehicles. They have to be stored outside, away from other vehicles, away from other exposures to keep things safe in case you do have that delayed fire. Now I understand real estate's at a premium and a lot of places don't have the space available to store these vehicles 50 feet apart or 50 feet away from any exposures. That's especially true once you start getting multiple electric vehicles in your lot. Now one solution I have seen on this is basically using these large concrete stalls, very similar to what you see at landscape companies where they store mulch, stone, other products. Now, a few key points to consider. If you have an electric vehicle that has damage to the battery or you suspect there's damage to the battery. Number one, state of charge matters. There's a big difference between a vehicle that's got 100% state of charge versus one that's got 30% state of charge. Number two, this is a vehicle that has a large battery, a large high voltage battery. It is an energy storage device. This battery will not discharge over time, so it continues to store that energy. 
there's no easy way to discharge the battery. So if you've got that vehicle, it's got damage to the battery, consider reaching out to the manufacturer, the dealership. They may have recommendations on how to discharge the battery or dispose of the battery. Now, I'd love your input on this topic, so if you've got any experience or would like to add anything to the conversation, feel free to comment below.